So revenue can be defined as income, especially that of a company and especially that when it's of a substantial nature. And in this video, I'll be talking about the importance of revenue. My name is Jacques Tadart, this is Pretier Accounting Services. And if you're new to my channel on this channel, well, first of all, welcome. On this channel, you will find videos which, will, which are of an explanatory nature to how business owners understand their business from an accounting and tax point of view within South Africa. Now, today's video is about turnover, revenue, income, and all of these terms essentially mean the same thing. Slightly different, but they all refer to the same thing. So why is revenue important? Well, if I would ask you this, if you're a business owner, why did you go into business? The answer is usually to make money. If your answer is slightly different, I, I would like to find out about that, so please leave a comment. But the answer is usually they want to make more money or they want to make money. Some people want to become rich, but the purpose is they want to generate more money. And that is exactly what your revenue is. The revenue essentially is the first part of the five elements of financial statements, which I explain a bit more in this video. But the purpose, the, the principle is that, or the element which revenue consists part of is income. And income is all of the monies that are received by an entity. Individual, a human, a company, a CC, a trust, whatever the case may be, revenue is the income and income is the money that that entity receives. And that is why revenue is so important. Now, revenue can be earned from a various different number of venues, of sources. Sales, if you're selling a product. Fees, if you're selling a service. Um, even things like rent, when you are renting out a property. All of these items can be considered revenue. Now these are usually from some kind of a trade or operations point of view, but there are also non-trading incomes that can be considered revenue as well. Things, and, and these are specific to a company that trade by investing activities. And these could be dividends, interest they receive and the like. So those are your, your basic revenue. And the way I explained it right now, there's another term for this. It's called gross revenue, right? Now, gross revenue is essentially the total amount of sales as per the monies that you've received. Now, according to the International Financial Reporting Standards, this kind of definition falls or encompasses um, or entails a single term known as revenue. But for many companies, there's a cost involved of generating this income. There's a cost involved of generating these sales, these fees, all of those. And for those entities, the 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 cost involved um, it could be something like that to spend money on buying a product or buying materials to manufacture that product. They had to pay a sales rep, a commission, in order for the sales rep to actually go and sell this product. Um, so there's all of these different costs involved. If you have laborers, let's say for example, you have to pay a casual wait, um, a casual laborer for a day's work before you can invoice the client or customer for that product or service. These kind of costs all form part of what is known as cost of sales. Now your cost of sales is a cost that typically won't exist if you did not have those sales. So they're usually a variable cost. The more your sales goes up, the typical thing is your cost of sales will go up as well. But so the money that the company makes is not just necessarily all of the sales because of the cost of sales, right? So what's the money that the company actually makes? Now the first indicator of what that money is, is your gross profit. Now that's the difference between sales and cost of sales, right? So this can also be considered net revenue. So gross revenue I've mentioned before when I spoke about sales, that's total sales. Net revenue is pretty much your gross profit. 
it's your sales less the costs involved in generating those sales. So net revenue is more or less the same as gross profit. So don't get confused, especially not considering there is a net profit option as well. Most income statements have, are, are following the gross profit format, which means total sales, then cost of sales, and then gross profit. Most income statements follow this principle, but they are the exception to the rule. So why is gross profit important? Your gross profit is the first indicator of how much money the company is actually making. Usually the gross profit is allocated towards sales, um, or not, not sales, salaries, um, directors remuneration, shareholders emoluments, and the gross profit essentially then becomes that which is applicable to cover the other costs that are not directly involved with the sale of products. So the gross profit is applied to most of the other expenses and if there's anything left there, that's the money that the company makes. So the gross profit is the first indicator of the money the company makes. Now, the gross profit is usually expressed as a percentage, as a percentage of sales or as a percentage of turnover. Usually you would take the gross profit figure and put that over sales. And I've mentioned this in my previous video, which I already linked about the income statement. Now, a too low gross profit figure could mean that you're running at very high risk of going into a loss if you are experiencing tough economic times and people are buying less of your service. A too high gross profit margin means you are potentially overpriced, right? Or the quality of the products that you're using or selling might be of a lower standard and you might run some risks there. So the idea is to maintain a balanced gross profit for a, as long as possible. Now I have a friend that currently maintains an IT related company at about 52% gross profit. And that's fairly well. Um, that's considered quite well in his industry. I have another friend that has a medical related company and his gross profit averages around 70% on a month to month basis. And for these two entities in these two completely different industries, their gross profit percentage or the gross profit margin is significantly different, different, but they're on par more or less within their industries in their individual cases. So your gross profit is the first indicator. Now there's always, always, always an argument for and ways to improve your gross profit percentage. Now, before I get to some examples, your gross profit percentage should not be confused with your profit or your profit margin, your gross profit margin should not be confused with markup. All right. Let's take, let's say you buy a product for hundred grand and you add a 50% markup. So you sell the product for 150 rand, right? So your markup in this case was 50%, but your margin would be the 50 over 150, which gives you 33%, right? So 50% markup is usually a 33% margin, if that makes sense. Um, so don't get confused between the two. There is generally a difference and a lot of business owners don't understand this. So here is a couple of ideas on how you can better your gross profit percentage. The first option is when you, when you put through a, an increase, in your sales price. Try and go for a couple of percentages more than the official inflation rate. This means, or this way, you might build in that extra two or 3% cushion, which over a lot of volume will become substantial. Um, when you are looking at your, your, your cost of sales, try and maintain a low as possible increase. You want to Increase your sales and lower your costs. Increase your income, lower your costs. That will increase your gross profit margin. So if your, let's say your cost of sales is increasing by 7%, try and increase and go push for an increase of 8.5% or 9% on your sales, right? Your sales price. Then if you're in manufacturing, consider trying to streamline your manufacturing product line or production line. Um, Try and work with discounts with other customers or, or suppliers and try not, not with customers, stop discounting, but 
work on getting a bit of a discount from your suppliers. That way you can reduce your cost of sales. Um, or you can physically have more units for the same cost, right? And that will overall reduce your cost, which again will increase the difference and increase your margin, right? Then the last option is try and decrease your cost of sales. Um, if, if that is at all possible, right? So try and renegotiate with your suppliers because you have built a long standing relationship with them, um, because you have been building um, good trust with them, you're buying regularly, frequently, try and see if they're willing to give you a bit of a discount because this will also then increase your GP margin, right? But do not, and I repeat, do not simply play around with your structure and move a cost from cost of sales to a different expense, right? In next week's video, I'll explain a bit more about the net profit, but by doing this, you're essentially changing around or playing around with your structure to increase your gross profit, but it won't have much of an impact. In fact, it might have a negative impact on your net profit percentage. Right. So I hope you enjoyed this video about the, the gross profit sales and cost of sales. Um, the introduction, well, the first section of the income statement. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. My name is Jacques Taliart. This is Pretoria Accounting Services. And on a very cold and rainy welcome rainy Boxburg day. I hope you have a great week.